So, years about uh, 2000, 2001, and iRobot now knew a lot about, our, about robotics. We, we, we sort of entered the game doing that, but we also now knew about cleaning. We knew about mass manufacture, and the, uh, uh, the investment environment was relatively liberal. There's all these wacky internet companies that were getting funded at crazy valuations, and so for some reason, a robot company didn't sound so weird. And we were able to raise some money. And so, we decided the time was right, finally to uh, deliver on that original vision and create a consumer product named the CyberStar. <laughs> <laughs> this actually was the best name our engineers could come up with. <laughs> so after we decided that was perhaps not as, as wise, or, or others told us that was not wise, perhaps, <laughs> um, we said, well, how about the dust puppy? And that true also was decided that was not particularly good. And we came up with a Roomba by outsourcing. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm going to track the, uh, well, we were an engineering company, and I, you know, we had a lot, a long path to go. First, we learned about cost. Now we're learning that we should not necessarily name things. But Roomba <laughs> was, in fact, a name, and we did launch the uh, the Roomba. And the challenge, of course, when you're launching a new product as a small company with very uh, uh, small resources and so forth, is how do you market it and get your word out? And we were very, very skeptical about. TV advertising. We felt that you know it was very uh, salesy, and we were engineers, we didn't like salesy. And so that the first television commercial that was ever created for the Roomba was not, in fact, a North American television commercial. It was a Korean television commercial, and I'll share that gem with you now. <laughs> <laughs> position that commercials were useless and uh, perhaps set the company back some period of time because of this but um, and, and thus we didn't actually create a television commercial when we launched the Roomba. What saved us was the press. When we launched Roomba we had developed over our 14 uh, failed business models and all of our demonstrations and so forth, a cadre of reporters who was interested by the fact that iRobot actually created things that moved. They would go around writing articles about robots and they would all be static displays. When they came to our company, we would show them stuff moving. And that was significantly impressive enough for them to keep ties with us. And when we told them about the Roomba, they wanted to write about it. They were skeptical, but we launched with Walt Mossberg in the Wall Street Journal, article in the New York Times, three articles the first week in USA Today, uh, three-page spread in Time Magazine. In fact, this list of press coverage represents the press coverage in the first month of launch of Roomba. We were able to get probably over $10 million worth of effective exposure by embracing the press sending them our products, asking them what they thought, and hoping that they would write about it. And that truly is how iRobot's uh, story, the, the Roomba story, got off the ground. So I would recommend any, this has got to be the highest leverage exposure that um, one can find uh, out there today. The next year, our mission was broadening distribution. And um, 
we, we had hired some, a guy in from a, 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 um, a consumer product company and, and he convinced us that, you know, against our will, we actually had to make a commercial. And uh, I'm going to uh, show you what we created. Imagine, if you will, the engineering influence this person had to deal with. Very few leather-clad models in this particular commercial. In fact, I don't think you see anyone now, above the edge. Now, there's a smarter way to vacuum. It goes places you can't. It picks up what you see and what you don't. All with the push of a button. Change the way you clean forever. Roomba Robotic Floor Back. Buy your Roomba today at 1 888 9 Roomba. Roomba Robotic Floor Back. If it's down there, we'll get it. So, there's a commercial that an engineer can love. All robot all the time, just showing it work, work, work. If it's down there, we'll get it. The, uh, the, the tagline. And um, that was in 2003, and sales were. Flat. We were, um, you know, we had this great pop when we launched. I won't say sales were disappointing because they were pretty good, but they weren't what we had hoped. We had a lot of inventory, and we were kind of uh, wondering where, which direction this thing was going. And um, something that we do at iRobot every morning is, is bring people together for a quick 10-minute huddle. You know, what's going on and so forth. And the guy in charge of our web sales. Uh, <clears throat> at this particular meeting, and this meeting, to give you some more context, happened about a week and a half after Thanksgiving. And if you're a consumer person, you know that the biggest retail uh, shopping day of the year is the day after Thanksgiving, and this is when sales are supposed to explode and things weren't exploding for us, and we were very, very anxious about what that meant for a year. And um, sitting in this meeting, this guy raised his hand and said, you know, why did sales triple yesterday? I don't, know. I don't know. We didn't have any new special. No, there was no press article that came out that there was. Uh, we had no reason. We liked the idea that sales had tripled, but we had no idea. And this other person said, "You know, I was watching TV and I saw this Pepsi commercial, and I feel obliged to share it. This Pepsi commercial." I'll be ready to go in a minute. Take your time. I'm back in. <laughs> you like that, don't you? <laughs> Alright, you're thirsty now, ain't you? Mmm, a little Pepsi. Get back and clean eight my pants. <laughs> That's what I like to do. Nothing checks out, checks out, cut up. It's the cold one. And sales tripled. <laughs> so I think we learned something there. Here we, first off, fantastic. He called it a vacuum. It was obviously so powerful that it ripped his pants off. And, and uh, you know, um, it also was a very human experience for uh, the viewer. It, was, it, uh, it wasn't a BMW commercial uh, that, like that first thing that you had seen. Um, here is here's making fun of the technology. Here is showing efficacy, but in an interesting way, and showing it working with people. And that was a, a, a very important thing. And 2003 ended up being a very, very good year. Thanks to Pepsi. And I am a loyal Pepsi drinker.